Hello everyone, welcome Swampside at Toad Hall again. Out the back, in the pond, in the rushes, the beast and I are lurking right. and helping us, helping us, oh well, unlock the future really, is Ben McNeil, Senior Research Fellow, uh, University of New South Wales, Climate Change Research Centre. Ben, the cities of the future, how will they look different to say what we find around us today and how quickly will those changes happen? Travel ladders, right? Travel ladders? Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. standing on things moving along. Mm -hmm. Like oh, an airport yeah, or so in Teleporters. The yeah, okay. The cities of the future are going to be quite different because the, the not only we have the pollution aspects of, of out of our car, we have we're fossil fuel, we're burning that, and that's going straight into the atmosphere and causing all sorts of stuff and health effects. So we want to sort of get rid of that from a dense city living because that's health direct health effects aside from carbon pollution itself. So there's a lot of benefits to electrification, rails, rail networks, um, public transport generally. But then you've got the buildings themselves, and they are, they are definitely, uh, they'll be changing too. Um, not only the, the, how we design them in an energy efficient way, but also the materials. The cities of the future will have a lower carbon intensity material load as well. Uh, and those businesses and, and universities which develop those technologies for like uh, um, recycled paving or all sorts of stuff, or recycled brick, they're, they're gonna benefit. And so you, you will see quite a, 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 an eclectic mix of, of um, new city design and new, a, a, a new building standards. Benefit not just from being low carbon, but also economically, because yeah, it's cheaper. Exactly, it's right. cheaper to run. So this is the thing, is that, is that we typically think of buying something, upfront costs are all what we tend to think of today. Mm. But actually, um, upfront costs uh, uh, can actually be quite cheap in comparison to the running costs of something, whether oh. it be you know, cars or homes or, you know. Girlfriends, <laughs> am I right? Yeah. The thinking of the future is essentially, well, while we're charging more for pollution, it's an upfront cost. It's actually lowering the cost of our running costs because we're gonna be designing the homes, more efficient homes, more efficient cars and that sort of thing. How can you communicate that to people who just see the front cost? What's the best way of kind well, of telling it, people It has that? to be labeling. In the future, the homes you buy, you have some sort of energy rating. They're starting to do that. It's, it's not really um, widespread though. Mm. Cars, the same sort of thing. That's obviously the labelling of the cars and how running costs. So running costs are a big, big deal now and, and mm. that's a big competitive factor that business is driving towards. And it's going to really be kick-started from this carbon pricing as well. And of course now they have uh, be able to build solar energy into the building itself mm. in terms of, I think they've got a paint now that is uh, yeah, that's solar. That's a wonderful well, thing. I saw a solar panel roads mm -hmm. in you know, North America where there's so many roads out there and I, I obviously they're built to standard of, I don't know, that lor lorries can go on them, but, yeah. but pretty amazing stuff that's coming out. And this is where the optimism comes in. I have a very optimistic view of this and how technology and innovation is just a wonderful thing. And Australians are really, we are the most um, innovative. Despite what we hear, um, our scientific output from a from a from a nationwide perspective is really high as a hmm. per capita. So we we really we really stand to benefit from this. Now, finally, you claim that the coal industry is doomed no matter what happens. So I think I think it's fair to say. I don't know about it's doomed. Oh. I guess it, it needs to adapt. Right. So if it can't find low emission a low emission coal in the future, countries like Japan and South Korea and Taiwan who buy our coal now aren't going to. And so, Ben, what happens when you turn up at the coal industry's front door with this powerful message? Knock, knock, knock. Mm. It's all over, guys. Pack yeah. up. See you Go later. Go green. Yeah, it's funny. I haven't had many invites. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't really know why. Right. Seriously, I'm not, uh, I'm not here saying they're going to... It's the death of the coal industry. It's just like any industry they have to adapt to. Any industry has to in innovate, whether it's, whether it's car making or... But they've, they haven't done much except dig. You know, it's not as though they produced a car and they thought, oh... We'll put four wheels on the, you know, instead of three, and it goes yeah. better and put the that's, engine in Yeah, there. that's one of the problems is that you're not finding much uh, research and development into this particular space. That they're putting a lot of R&D and research into finding bigger spades to dig up stuff, mm. but not thinking about who's going to buy that product in the end. Uh, I was talking to uh, some union people about this and they say the coal industry's innovation comes in when they find ways to cut more jobs, uh, basically by replacing jobs with machines built by people yeah. from overseas. It, it's like we have to get to a crisis or near crisis to actually do something. It's like, do we, do we really want to just get to the point to which the coal industry is essentially shedding thousands of jobs rather than transitioning the, the over a longer period of time so it's, it's less of a... Uh, of an impost? Yes, that's what I think that's what we want to do, right? We don't, we don't want to get to a crisis. 
I don't think. This is what this is about, you know, to, to, to hopefully having a more prosperous, you know, low carbon economy, which is also um, leading, well, nearly leading the world in trying to combat climate change. On that positive message, uh, we leave you from the probe, leave you from the swamp and thank uh, Ben McNeil for coming in today and, uh, well, spending some time down the deep end. See you next time when the beast and I go probing.